الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين We are supposed to talk about the identity of the angels today But then, because of this occasion, the subject changed and we start with this word that there is a capacity in human beings that can be higher than the angels. If human being chose the path of sacrifice over selfishness if human intellect and conscience and spirit dominate his desires then he or she can be higher than angels But if the desires are under control, if the desires are dominating the human spirit, then man can be lower than, lower than animals. We are dedicating this service to a lady called Sanaz Nizami who suffered and was killed but she saved seven souls she was only 27 year old and the family was able to watch the final hours of their daughter in the hospital thank to Mrs. Gail Brandy who is among us and we welcome her presence here Sanaz was student of Michigan Tech University and I was really impressed when I read in her either resume or statement on her Facebook talking about knowledge and saying that if you got knowledge don't be selfish be serving Knowledge is not to pocket money, but to serve God and humanity. This represents the culture of the faith, Islamic faith, Christian faith, divine faith. They promote this kind of spiritual understanding. It is not only an Islamic culture, but also Iranian culture. We should say shame to those who push for more sanction against Iran, while a daughter from Iran is giving her life to save seven American people and she does it and her family supports that out of love for humankind where are those congressmen to put this sanction against the real supporters of terrorism in the Middle East those who caused 9-11 those who caused death and destruction every day in Iraq in Syria in Lebanon 
they are the one who should be under a sanction, not a country represented by Sanaz Nizami. This morning I got an email from Sarah, Sanaz's sister. It's a long email, I just mentioned a few paragraphs that she is talking about her sister. She was hardworking. She wanted to further her education, be useful for people and God. She was a good servant of God. She tried her best to be a good Muslim. She did a lot of charity works. She helped homeless people, retarded individuals. She helped everyone who suffered from cancer that she knew. She read the Quran hundreds of times. This is amazing. Hundreds of times. In Arabic, Persian, English. She started to translate the Quran in English and French. She had told me that like Christians who had ministry for helping needy people and talk about God, she wanted to build a ministry in future in America for Muslim people to talk about charity, to act charity and talk about God and the Quran in action. She gave her life to give life to seven organ recipients. But although we insisted that we want to be in touch with those organ recipients, there's no news from there yet. Then she talks about her father who likes to come to America next summer. And she is talking about her belongings that in uh, things that belong to Sanaz in her house uh, in, in Los Angeles actually the, the house that she used to live and Sarah is saying that they like to give uh, those stuff to, to the charity organization. She is saying that she likes to see those people who receive the organs because they are their new brothers and sisters and they want to be in touch with them. I reply that your sister is alive, she made you and humanity proud. Don't worry about the slowness of this news because this is how things work in America. Many times things are slow but it takes time and you will receive the information that you like. But your sister is already recognize the United States as a heroine, as someone who did a heroic uh, personality, represent a heroic personality, and the media in the U.S. are talking about her. She is a shahida, she is a martyr, and she is alive forever. But the madman, the devil, who caused this tragedy is already in hell and will stay in hell forever. When I was reading the news about the hospital and those final hours of Sanaz, really I could not help but to cry. And my wife came by accident to the library in our house and she said, what is going on while you are crying? And I said, we cry for so much injustice and anger and arrogance and oppression in this world. I, 
am upset that why the foundation of family is failing, is not functioning well. How can we have a good society, a successful society, a safe and secure society if the family is not functioning and it's not safe? This sister was a victim of domestic violence. That is a bad news in this country and everywhere in the world, unfortunately. One of the latest surveys says that 30% of women participated in that survey, they said that they were victims of domestic violence in different ways. It's not only women, sometimes men are the victims of domestic violence as well. But obviously the number of women who are victims are much more than men. This survey says that three women are killed in this country every day out of domestic violence. It's almost three times more than men to be victims of the same abuse and injustice. We have to start the lessons of morality and peace from the house. Al-Ikhlas, Al-Ithar, Al-Taqwa, Al-Tawadu, Al-Hilm, Al-Hikmah, Al-Ifa, Al-Mahabba, Shukr, Al-Shaja'a, Al-Salam, Al-Adab, Al-Adl, Al-Saf, Al-Adal, Al-Afu, Al-Mahra. These are the lessons that need to be applied in the family. Sincerity, sacrifice, purity, humbleness, wisdom, love, appreciation, Courage, courtesy, justice, forgiveness. These are the lessons. Now the lessons of thorn, injustice, and anger, and arrogance, and greed, and deception. No. It is a tragedy that because of the failing of the family system, more than 30% of babies are born in this country coming from unmarried couples, unmarried parents. The traditional values of replacing with the bachelor culture these days. Millions of Americans are watching things like bachelor that people are racing for rows and making fun and they think this is all family. When we go to the Holy Quran, women ayatihi and khalaqa lakum min anfusukum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala baynakum mawaddatan wa rahma. Mary is a wonder, is one of the signs of the Creator and is based on three important standards of peace and passion and compassion. The Quran says, Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahunna. Relationship between husband and wife should be relationship between you and your dress. How close your cloth is to you. And you cover and you protect and you keep it clean. This is how close husband and wife are supposed to be. Shame on those who pick up only one word from the Quran and they don't understand the meaning of this word and they interpret it in a foolish way while there are tens and tens of verses in the Quran about peace and healing and harmony in the family they don't read these verses chapter 4 verse 19 treat your, your wives with kindness. Sarrahuhunna sarah, sarah and jamila. 33, 49. Don't divorce, but if you have to divorce, make the divorce with dignity. You don't have to bring so much pain and suffering and torture and accusation and aggression. 
In the case of divorce, do it, Jamila, in a beautiful way. Another verse is فَإِمْسَاكٌ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أو تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ Either you are able to live with honor and love or you want to separate with honor and beauty. Another verse is لا تُمْسِكُهُنَّ ذِرَارًا Don't hurt your wives. Another verse is وَلَا تُضَارُّهُنَّ Don't make that up. Don't disturb them. Another verse is وَلَا تَعْذُلُهُنَّ Don't isolate them. Don't prison them. Because Sarah told me in her letter that they think that her sister was about a week or two prison in their house because she wanted to go out and go to university and thank the professor who arranged the admission for her to come to Michigan but he did not let her to go out made the place a prison for her the Quran says respect even their financial life, and if you gave your wife anything, don't take it back. And when we go to the Sunnah, the Holy Prophet said, خيركم خيركم وأنا خيركم The best of people in the community are the ones who are best to their families. He said, جلوس المرء عند عياله خير من عبادة السنة. When a husband sits down with his wife, whether in the house or a house of worship or in public, is better than praying God for for one year. That's how rewarding, how important the closeness and attachment between husband and wife. The Prophet said, إِنَّكَ أُجِرْتَ لِلْنُقْمَةِ الَّتِي تَذَعَهَا فِي فَمِ إِمْرَاتِكِ Even when you are eating, if you want to show some gesture to your wife and take a, a little piece of food and put in the in the mouth of your wife, out of just showing appreciation and love, the Prophet said, you are going to be rewarded. You receive absolute reward for this act of kindness. And of course, he talked about the uh, services of ladies in the house. He said, مَا مِنْ إِمْرَأَةٍ تُسْقَى زَوْجَهَا شَرْبَةً مِنَ الْمَاءِ إِلَّا أَنْ كَانَ خَيْرًا لَهَا مِنْ عِبَادَةِ السَّنَةِ When you bring your husband a glass of water, this is as you are praying for the entire year. إذا صلت المرأة خمسها وصامت شهرها وحفظت فرجها وأتاعت زوجها فلتدخل الجنة من أي باب من أبوابها When she prays and practices her faith and coordinates and cooperates with her husband God would say that you can choose any path to paradise you, Your destination is paradise You just choose any path that you want Yes, brothers and sisters, based on our traditions, the family life is based on love and loyalty and hope and help and harmony and respect and responsibility, tranquility, understanding, patience, forgiveness, fulfillment of the marriage covenant, trust, telling the truth, sincerity, sincere interaction, and a safe and secure environment. It is about willing to compromise and sacrifice for the sake of relationship to survive. When that shayar Arab says, talking about his wife and saying, Ruhuha, Ruhi, wa Ruhi, Ruhuha, wa laha qalbun wa qalbi qalbuha, her soul is my soul and her heart is my heart. That is the union of the family that the Prophet said, Alayka bidat al-deen, be careful when you choose a wife, focus on her faith first, because when someone has faith, she or he has akhlaq and morality and all these values. If the family knows these principles, if the family becomes a battle zone, 
of animosity and intimidation and anger and insulting and abusing and selfishness and rebellion and rudeness and cheating and lying and threatening and creating fear and pain and sickness and suffering in the family environment, then this family is not functioning right. We hear the cases of unfortunately drugs and alcohol and adultery and using bad language and insult and abusing, hitting and beating and foolishly committing the crime of killing like in the case of Sanaz. We need to get more information about what kind of stubborn and anger and dishonesty and deception were involved in preparation for this crime. Yes, brothers and sisters, we need to take care of this important issue of family, whether it's a marriage or domestic violence, we cannot wait and watch other Sana Nizamis to be killed and be victims of domestic violence before the government, the places of worship, the community, the public do something about this. This is why last year I suggested that in this community we need to to establish a marriage foundation. So lots of youth, they want to marry and they are confused. They don't know what to do. I had an individual coming from Ohio by bicycle. He is doing his PhD, but poor. And he had to come from Ohio to Dirkon by bicycle five, six hours. And I said, I admire your carriage. You are not afraid of, you know, anything that... And he said, no, I know the road and I have any equipment. If there was any problem, I'm, I'm prepared for that. And I'm coming here to ask you for help. I need to marry. And I don't have money. But I'm faithful, I'm a student, I'm doing my PhD. And I need this community to support me. And we have so many similar cases. And this is the responsibility of the community to do something like that, to make sure that, as the Quran says, at-tayyibat lit-tayyibin, wa tayyibun lit-tayyibat, we match good people. So somebody innocent and madluma, like this sister, Sanas, whose family has a matter of fact, as I read in this email from Sarah, we were absolutely against this, this marriage, but she was by herself. And Sarah told me that she was actually abusing this situation and deceived. And finally, she paid her life for this situation. We take this marriage issue so seriously that when people come to us of wisdom for marriage, we have, as a matter of fact, a free marital questionnaire that has 100 questions that we say you can get this and study it together the goal of marriage the expectation the role the responsibility the kind of relationship that you have in your mind you talk about the financial you talk about vocation you talk about money you talk about future you talk about education about your children about future about everything so you start your marriage with knowledge then we won't face problems like we are facing today let us pray for the soul of sanas and ask god to provide her soul with peace we know that is the end of suffering for for sanas she is in god's kingdom and inshallah she is under the angel's protection. We, we pray that her family be rewarded and be patient and be 
at peace as they mourn the disaster of losing such a beautiful, hard-working, educated, missionary, faithful girl. I want to end with that, and then after this I would ask uh, uh, Dr. Gail also if she likes to come and say a few words. I'd like to end with a few Ash'ar in Farsi, you know, because her family may watch this on online and let us conclude this with a few uh, Ash'ar that is uh, the first one is from Mahum Adib and this is very very touchy and related to this occasion and Mahum Mutahari used to say that uh, Marhum Adib was crying when he read actually this Ash'ar from Hafiz. And Hafiz said it in the best way. Zanyar dil nabazam shukri spa shikayat yar
فکرنگ گیرم کند نزده توهی دستان شرق پاره دلی که دارم از بدخشان شما میرسد مردی که زنجیر غلامان بشکند میرسد مردی که زنجیر غلامان بشکند دیدم از روزنه دیوار زندان شما حلقی گرد منزنی دی پیکران آب و گل آتشی در سینه دارم از نیاکان شما با بهترین تسلیت ها از راه دور از فاصله شش هزار مایل از میشیگان به تهران ما سمیمانه ترین و بهترین تسلیت های خودمون رو به خانواده نظامی به والدین و فرزندان اونها به مناسبت درگذشت دلسوزانه و جانکار شهیده و مرحوم خانم سناز نظامی تقدیم میکنیم و برای اونها آرزوی صبر و پاداش فراوان At this moment, uh, Dr. Gay, would you like to say, share a few words with us on this occasion because you were involved? Let us please pay your absolute respect as we are welcoming uh, Gail to the podium to share with us uh, because she was involved with the final hours of this tragedy. Salwara Muhammad wa Muhammad.
it was early morning in Iran and late night at Marquette, I was able to contact her sister and her father. And of course, uh, it was such a difficult situation that, that we did speak in English and also with the Farsi interpreter. Her family, as you would expect, was in shock. And we just, we just wanted to help them. Uh, we, we talked to them several times that night and I have some very fabulous colleagues that are just so compassionate. They wanted, uh, and we wanted the family to be able to see her. And the family, of course, wanted to see her. So we started with some emails and some pictures and then had the idea to hook up a video um, Yahoo Messenger because Sarah, her sister, had a Yahoo account. So we were able to do that so that they could see Sanaz and spend time with her. I, I can't imagine how terrible it would be to have a family member in a different country that you are not able to see, be with, and say goodbye. So that, that was our goal, was that they could spend some time with her. Um, we knew it would be difficult for her family to get from Iran to the Upper Peninsula. It's actually difficult to get to the Upper Peninsula from anywhere. <laughs> it takes quite some time. And um, travel was not possible for her family. So we just needed to do what we needed to do so that her family could be with her. Because every family needs to just be with the people that they love. And I know that her family is very, very close. She spent her whole life helping other people, so when she uh, was pronounced brain dead, her brain had stopped. Uh, there was no blood flow, and so she was a candidate for organ donation. Her family said, Sana spent her whole life helping other people. She would want to save people in her death. So her family agreed to organ donation, and Sana actually saved seven people is amazing. She will, she will live on through those other people and eventually I suspect that, that they will get in touch with the family. It takes some time. There's quite a process. Uh, people have to heal uh, first and then there are opportunities hopefully in the future for them to contact the family. And, and I would really love to meet the family. I know our nurses all were, felt very close to Sanaz's family, and we would like her to come to Upper Michigan, uh, the whole family, and, and meet us. Uh, we have a, a very nice pastor who arranged that when Sanaz uh, died, that we have uh, one of our physicians is Muslim. She did the washing and the shrouding and. We tried to provide her a proper burial as best we could. It was, it's difficult to get uh, a, a body back to Iran and very expensive, so uh, we, they, the family did decide to bury her in Marquette. And she's close to people who really do care about her. Um, she was uh, buried according to Islamic custom um, as best we could provide and um, her she's buried in a very beautiful site in a beautiful graveyard and the, the nice thing about where she's buried is that those of us who took care of her and who had a bond with her we actually pass by this area every single day on our way to work and we think about her and we say prayers for her um, we thank her family I, I have been very touched by the outpouring of love from the Islamic community towards Market General. We've gotten um, a number of letters, I've gotten some calls, I even got flowers from, from a gentleman. Uh, clearly, um, there is much love in the community, and, and we feel very close to you. And I appreciate, I, I didn't intend to come and speak here. I just wanted to pay her respects to Sanaz and I thank you very much.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين